Right, we've got the, the new B&M 150 pound Trachycarpus potted up. I say potted up, um, I did look into some pots, you know, big size pots, and there's two reasons why I didn't go for a pot. And the first one is they're very expensive when they get to, to the sort of sizes that I wanted. And the second reason really is that it's not stable. And this is at the front of the, my house where it does get a lot of wind, so a pot could blow over. And I know that, but it's because I used to have the, the olive tree, which is now there in a pot. And um, that used to be where this planter is now. And that blew over a few times when we had some strong winds. So when you're looking at uh, something that's a lot taller, that's obviously going to be top heavy and it's going to catch the wind. So we went for a planter. So for a decent size pot, and I really wanted something at least double the size that this uh, Trekkie Cup was coming, um, you'd be looking for a real basic one, probably about 60 to 80 pound for a, for a decent one. You, you're talking 150 to 200 pounds. So, um, yeah, I decided to make one. So we're looking at, this is just uh, Deccan. I believe it is six pound a length. And it is uh, 240 mil, oh, sorry, 240 centimeters, or just under six foot. I'm getting this all wrong just under eight foot lengths. So we'll, we'll do it in feet. Um, yeah, so eight foot lengths. Um, so real easy, cut a load in half. So I end up buying 10, which obviously works out at 60 pound at six quid a, a board. But um, it's pretty good stuff. It's from Wix. Um, I think they've got it on offer at the minute. That's normie bit more expensive than that either way so we we got 10 lengths only used actually eight and a half so what we're looking at is four foot wide by two and a half foot by two foot deep so again for under 60 pound that's a good size I mean that took nearly a a ton of soil to fill this. Luckily I had someone just up the road for me who wanted to get rid of a load of topsoil and that was actually decent quality. So I mixed in a lot of uh, horse manure and some chicken manure pellets as well. Um, yeah so that's a real good size to for it to root out in. And like I say I'm not planning to do anything up with this other than just let it be in this raised planter that is going to restrict its growth but the fact of the matter is that's already doing what I wanted to do which is just sort of cover the, the fence to the uh, entrance to the side entrance to the house so that is exactly what it's doing right now instant impact um, I did manage to, to break a frond in the repotting process I've left it on anyway, you can see it's a, a snap there, but yeah, so I'm not expecting anything to, I'm not expecting this to put on a foot of trunk a year, it, I can just sit there and stay exactly the same size it is forever as far as I'm concerned, that's doing what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, so it was a double that we brought, if you've watched the previous video and I had a very good suggestion that um, palms in particular but most plants look good in freeze sort of odd numbers rather than even numbers so I did plant another tracky in with it albeit quite a smaller one but we've got the tiered effect we've got a big one in the middle slightly bigger one to the left with a foot and a half trunk and we've got this small one here which is probably only about five inches of trunk but that is a Fortunae cross Nanus, so that's going to be a 
a more of a dwarf one anyway. So again, I'm not expecting huge growth. I'm not expecting anything other than, you know, a few new leaves here and there. I'm happy for it to stay the size it is. All right, so obviously it's not just the tractor carpets in it. When you've got a plant of this big, you need some uh, fillers and spillers. So what we've got is at the front here, we've got some petunias, just cheap bed and petunias. So we've got five of them and they're all red. Um, very small at the minute, but the idea is obviously you can imagine them trailing over. We've got some creeping jenny, a couple of small bits of that, which again will hang down. So that'll soften the, the front of that quite nicely when that all kicks in. Um, at the back, behind the trachycarpus, I did have a couple of red stars. Um, I don't know, we're in sort of shade here. So but we had a couple of red stars with a little bit of trunk on. So I stuck them in there for a bit of contrast. Um, so yeah, we've got one each side there. And then I've just stuck a, a leftover can I had from when I was selling plants. Um, I think I've got an Intica purpurea there and a can of musifolia there at the back just to, to give it a bit of height and greenery. And then we've got the uh, coleus either side in the midsection. And then we've got these interesting looking plants a really tropical colour right bright really catch your eye sort of reminds me of a coral so you've got the red leaves so we've got two types here we've got the darker one with the sort of dark maroon leaves and we've got the lighter one which is uh, more of a pinky leafed and flower and then the maroon again there um, let me just check what they are called because uh, it's not something I've brought before or used before Celiosa Celosia um, yeah that's just from the range free for nine quid so I thought I'd give it a good blast of colour I believe that um, they're more, I suppose they're like coleus, they are tender, they're more of a, people grow them as a house plant. But um, yeah, I think it gives it a good pop of colour. And if we can imagine that with the uh, petunias and creeping jenny hanging down the front, that's uh, yeah, quite a nice tropical look. So once it all kicks in, should look good for the summer. So the beauty of that is obviously each year I can change up the bed and plants at the front but you've always got the the evergreen of the uh, the trackies and the cord lines red stars at the back as well so year-long interest and we can swap it out each year with some something interesting in the front so yeah again 60 quid for the wood I did line it with I've got some thick material, offcuts from work, um, sort of a banner material, really thick waterproof stuff. So I lined the inside and the bottom. Um, obviously, so, so when you water the soil, don't just fall out. Um, yeah, so that is what it is. So again, four foot wide, uh, just over two foot deep. So that should uh, keep them happy for a few years. Obviously, I'll be needing to feed this fairly regular in such a small enclosed amount of soil but um there's plenty of worms in there so i'll keep it ticking over and yeah we'll just regularly um liquid feed and probably chicken manure pellets all right so um that will be the um planter as it is so yeah we'll probably do an update on that maybe midsummer see how it looks see if we've got any new fronds coming and i did say that was a uh, mixed opinions on a lot of these sort of cheap b&m trekking carpets whereas with regard to sort of growth i know when i took this out of the pot that that 
rooted out the pot that was full of good quality roots and a lot of people have uh, messaged me on the last video saying that they've, they've had good results they've put them in the ground and they've gained nearly a foot or foot plus in one year so that's not like I mean you might get a bad one now and then and you know just the luck of the draw really but um, I think in general they're not as bad as people some people are making out is that you know what you're buying you take your gamble but yeah I'm very pleased with us doing the job I wanted to do right um, we'll leave it there well, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one